Hey, if he owns the hotels here too, we're fucked. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Monday Movies, in which I'm joined by my good mate, Tom Gibbs, best called Gibbsy, Gibbsy, Gibbo. How you doing, mate? I'm doing very well. Got my cup of tea here, and I'm sat down, as boys, to talk about uh, the movie of Twist this week. 100%. I've got my H2O in a special plastic bottle, so watch out for that one. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> the film today is Gareth Edwards' Monsters, released in 2010, starring Scoot McNary and Whitney Abel, who are actually a real couple in real life. Joe, uh, really? Joe, why don't we Joe? We've had Joe on for the we last two episodes. We had Joe on recently, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gibbo. Gibbo. Monsters. What do you think of it? So, I never actually knew that those two were a couple. I thought they had good chemistry, um, but I couldn't work out why, and now I know. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, from Monsters. I looked at the um, the preview image for it and the uh, theatrical poster. thought it looked quite impressive. It's a movie that feels quite, uh, uh, I don't know, quite long in places. In other places as well, I thought, you know, I sort of wondered if this uh, really was a sort of a major budget movie um, in places because it's got, you know, it, it's quite well detailed in places. Um, and for a film that's titled Monsters, I'm quite impressed with uh, the way it took the story because it doesn't really uh, you, you know you've got the background where you've got uh, the monsters that have uh, that are roaming around that infected area of Mexico but it doesn't really explore too much of that which is interesting very well said because Gareth Edwards as a director came from a visual effects background so monsters was made on 500,000 pounds very small amount of money oh, so it's, it's definitely an independent film and it was produced by Vertigo films who make really interesting films like Bronson as well so because he became, came from a visual effects background, what they would do was film real signs and he would digitally insert fake signs, you know, like Zona Infectida, you know, kind of like Spanish translations of Infected Zone. And he did all of the visual effects of the monsters himself and all of the little additions like seeing how they uh, attach eggs, you know, like egg satches to the trees. He did all of that himself, which is phenomenal. And I think, yeah. considering it is an, a piece of low-budget filmmaking, I love that at its core it is a story of two people just trying to find their place in the world, where monsters just so happen to exist between America and Mexico. Yeah, it's truly impressive if that is the case with the, um, the budget for the film. But no, the the effects for it, uh, there are there are a couple of places where I wasn't a fan of the CGI, such as where the um, they're passing by on the, the on the bus or the train. And they see that a train did like derailed and was in the sort of the lower river below. I wasn't a fan of that too much, but from the actual look of the monsters, I was very impressed. Hundred percent. Yeah. No. I, I would. I would. Argue, I would agree that sometimes the CGI maybe does look a bit noticeable. But for me, where it truly gets the CGI right is knowing how to integrate it into the background. And interestingly, the film didn't really have a script. They had an idea, so they went out and they filmed about four and a half hours of content making it up as they went along. And then the editor came in and obviously had to condense it down to 90 minutes. And I would personally disagree with you when it comes to pacing, because for me, it, it, it flows by wonderfully, wonderfully so. But I do understand why you would think it is slow, because it certainly is, is more of a melodic piece, isn't it, than it is an action mm. drama. Yeah, there's not a lot of action, as you say. But, but you know, no, in some, in some places it did feel quite slow. Um, but was it really, did they film four and a half hours worth of movie? Yeah. Um, to then condense to that's impressive. That's truly it's, impressive. It's a real kind of example of uh, guerrilla filmmaking done on the fly with no money and just mm -hmm. a few actors because it was a crew of five, I think. You had your producer, you had your director, you had the two cast members and a sound and a sound recorder. So wow. this is kind of this is the stuff that you know that students do, you know, with minimal crew, minimal resources, minimal time. And what you get for me is actually a really effective product. And I think it culminates towards the end with probably the most beautiful finale you could ever imagine. And it really does mirror what state the main characters are in their relationship because you see these two monsters and you realise actually they mean no harm. They just rely on electrical currents to charge themselves and basically to feed. And, you know, they work together. And, you know, when they, they essentially kiss with their tentacles, which sounds a bit bizarre, uh, and, you know, give each other electricity. <laughs> what do the two characters do right at the end, just before the film cuts off? Near enough the same. Yeah, it's it's really well done. It is. One thing that I was um, rather interested in was the beginning, where you've got that um, the attack on the uh, the uh, group of military soldiers, 
which I didn't realise until the very end was actually mm -hmm. um, the two. Was it Andrew and Sam's the name of the characters? It yeah. was their escort, which I didn't realise because you've got similar sound file, you've got you know similar dialogue being used from both the beginning and the end, um, yeah. which make you recall back to that first scene. You think, oh god, you know, like that's I've heard that before. That's that's them. <laughs> yeah. You think after all of that they've endured and the massive journey they've gone through, you hope that they survive. It leaves mm. it on a very ambiguous note right at the beginning. So it's very good editing, actually. And that's yeah. why I think that's maybe the best thing about the film is that it's just so sublimely edited. You feel like if this film was a second longer, it would have failed. But it, it gets it, it gets it right. It rides the line very well. And I think characterization wise, what did you think of Andrew? Because as a character, he is kind of a selfish human being. He doesn't really want to help out Sam. And his his only job is to be a photographer of graphic imagery. And there's this lovely moment where he finds a dead child on the floor. And it's his moment to take a photo of it and profitize off it. But he decides to do the humane thing and just cover the body and not take a photo of it. He builds this kind of sense of dignity and changes as a person. Yeah, I really loved Andrew's character development. But he, go, he changes from this guy you know as as he meets even as he first meets sam you know it's like all right come on hurry up get on the train we gotta go we gotta get you out of the country you know gets it's a very efficiency based mindset and that really changes throughout the film especially when they're being led by those escorts yeah his mindset really changes and he truly i think uh you know calms down a bit more and you slowly start to see more of the humanity sort of seep from him Absolutely, and, and Sam as a character is equally as compelling, compel I nearly said compelling there, it, compelling in that she is on the brink of a relationship she doesn't really want to be a part of anymore, and she wrestles with that throughout the whole film, and re maybe realises that uh, Andrew is maybe the person she's been wanting to live with, and I think it is, is explored well enough without them going into kind of melodramatic territory, you know, there's no scenes of, oh, you know you want to be with me, I don't want to be with you, I'm married! There's none of this kind of garbage to it. Mm. It feels quite real, actually, and I think that feeds into the whole idea of, like I said, Gareth Edwards, the director, getting the camera, because he was the DP as well, just getting the camera, filming what he could, making it as naturalistic as possible. And it's just two two people essentially going on a road trip, really. Gradually, as the film goes on, you start to um, get a bit more information being given about each of the characters, such as that um, Andrew, Scoot's character, has got uh, a, a son, in a way. Even though, uh, But we learn later on in the film, again, that it's not his bio, bio, you know, that it's not his biological son. But nonetheless, that that's still a relationship that Andrew has and, you know, in that, showing that he cares about someone deeply that's safe and across the border. And you also you get a bit more insight as to what Sam's situation is. Uh, you know, when she's first on the phone with her father speaking to him, you know, did you call your did you call your fiance? I think his name's John. It's just there's just silence in response as if you think, oh, it's something quite sour in that department. Yeah, it sets up really well. And it's kind of real people in a real world. What you can sense. Gareth Edwards doing is getting this outlandish concept like aliens and placing them in the real world to the point where no one thinks of them as aliens anymore. They're just kind of, they're just co-inhabiting the place with them. And I find that really interesting because monsters to me feels very complete as a world and you don't even really see the monsters that much. That's what's insane about it. All of the details of the infected zone separating America from Mexico and the fact that you can't travel through the infected zone because it's just too dangerous. It feels so complete as a world. I think it's astonishing, like I said, on such a low budget that they've managed to do this. Yeah, you mentioned not seeing the monsters very much in the film, and I think that is quite uh, quite a good thing of them to have done. Not to have tried to try to have forcefully made the monsters be the subject of the film, despite the film being called Monsters. Um, you know, the subject for the film is the relationship explored between these two people that are trying to achieve the same objective just get out of get out of mexico across the border home safe yes exactly we've got to talk about score as well because john hopkins this he makes this beautiful kind of uh tragic and uh somber music to this movie that really hits me i mean the main theme is is, is incredible and there's another track called candles which is when they obviously go to a day of the dead ceremony ceremony in mexico and they kind of rewrite it so it, it's actually about all the people who have been killed by the monsters and once again, that's kind of typical on, you know, out on the fly, 
guerrilla filmmaking, just capturing stuff and making it work. What did you think of the score? The score, I thought, was... Um, it, it's, it's not the most grand piece of music I've ever heard in my... But it, at the same time, it doesn't really need to be. It doesn't really rely on the music to carry you through it as much. And, you know, mm. I, th I feel like music's only played where it's necessary. And when there's important dialogue being said, there's not going to be... There's not some sort of soft, melodic background to it. In, so in some places, it's just silence. And, you know, and that... You mentioned about how it's real people in a setting that feels as real as possible. I think that also quite helps with that quite a lot more. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel, like I said, it doesn't feel cheap or melodramatic. It, it just just about manages to capture some sort of essence of reality, doesn't it? I was, ex I was almost expecting a, a, a Jurassic Park type um, thing. Because when, when you first mentioned this to me a, a while ago uh, as a film to talk about for Monday Movies, I thought, okay, this will be some kind of... Jurassic Park thing, they'll enter, you know, the, the 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 park as it were, and they'll see some of the monsters. They'll either run away or do something. But no, there's there's not a lot of that, and it doesn't focus on the monsters as such at all, which is really nice. Yes, yeah, they're coexisting. They're doing their own thing. They're certainly not asking for any trouble. Are we the monsters going out there and trying to essentially torment them? Yeah, because all they rely on really is that is electricity, and it's and it's that's explored upon more as the film progresses you know with uh, Andrew covering the light inside the car for example and then at the very end where the monster is feeding off of the uh, the television kind of you realize oh you know actually they just need electricity yeah. to survive and the people yeah. that have been surviving so in the affected zone have been doing quite nicely because they've probably not had as much access to a resource such as electricity. Yes, and you get all these, as you said, you get all these hints. There's that great scene when they're on the boat driving across the lake and they come across a fighter jet that comes back up and then is taken back down by the, one of the monsters. And this is where I think mm. Gareth Edwards should be fully commended for what he achieved with the budget. Because like I said, doing all the visual effects yourself is such a challenge already. But the way he incorporates them into the scale of the movie. So let's say he uses the background or he disguises the monsters behind things. So like the, at the gas station, they're kind of superimposed a little bit by the gas station so they can't actually be seen too well. It's just so well done. This is truly, truly is fantastic. It's the kind of thing that I can't imagine a film of that degree being edited by one person on a laptop. But for the you know for what it was filmed on that could very well have been the case and you would just That's never have realized give it give oh that is exactly what happened mm. the guy actually just filmed edited it on a laptop because this, this has been a really nice and i wasn't i wasn't expecting to enjoy this film um as much but i ended up really not really liking it I'm, I'm really glad to hear it do not check out the sequel though by tom green it's called monsters dark continent and it lacks all of the subtlety and all of the nuance of the first movie and it's just this kind of by the numbers horrible boring kind of war movie with soldiers. Uh, it's, I, I actually hated it so much that I got my DVD and stabbed it with a knife. Really? I, I was so angry because I oh, loved no. the first movie. The oh. sequel was such just kind of like a, an, it was just a, a poop on the first movie that I broke the disc. I couldn't, I was so angry. So don't watch the sequel. The question is, uh, Monsters Dark Continent or Robocop 3 for you? I'd put which, Robocop which 3 is, all the way. Which is better? Really? Wow. Robocop for all the way, because at least it has its funny moments. The you wouldn't amount... believe this! He's me alone as a puppy! Because <laughs> uh, the amount of times we slammed that film, we've done so both on and off air now. Yes. Um, but for me, to, for me to get that much insight as to how much you despise a film, yes. um, almost makes me think we should talk about it on Monday Movies at some point. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Anyway, we are coming to an end on our 13th episode of Monday Movies. We've been talking about the highly underrated film Monsters, directed by Gareth Edwards, starring Scoot McNary and Whitney Abel. Please check it out. Fantastic film, and I'm really glad you enjoyed it, Gibbsy. It's been, it, it, was a, it was a really nice experience. As I say, I felt like it did go on for a bit, but I still enjoyed the film. Glad to hear it. Gibbsy, where can we find you? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> as he awkwardly yeah, sips was... his cup of tea. Yeah, I was mid-sip. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So I'm most active these days on my YouTube channel, where I upload episodes of uh, Monday Movies each week. I do my own music work, as well as upload music from various other media just for people to listen to. Uh, I will also include the link to my Twitter account, where I will be reposting the tweets from Monday Movies Twitter account, uh, highlighting each new episode's release every Monday. 
Fantastic. As Gibbsy continues to swig on his beverage, you can find me on Twitter at Stanwilks10 and on YouTube here with the previous episodes of Monday Movies. We are nearly coming to an end on nearly 20 episodes, which is kind of phenomenal. We passed 10 recently, so thank you to everyone who has continued to watch and continue to enjoy the episodes we make. Uh, I've also got some short films on there and I've got some music. Please check it out. It would mean the world to me. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Thank you, Gibbo. We shall see you in the next episode. Indeed. Take care, everybody. Bye.